couple of days ago, I was reaching to turn on the lamp and as I reached to turn on the neck of the lamp, I got electrocuted and was thrown across the room. Now, there wasn't a bulb in the lamp and it was left on at the wall. And so I stuck my fingers in and got electrocuted. Welcome to Mr. C's Biology. Today, we are talking about nerves, what they do and what their adaptations are, what makes them good at their job. And we'll also talk about why they get messed up when you get electrocuted. You've probably heard of nerves. They're long cells with spindly bits at each end and they control most of the instantaneous responses in your body. For slower, longer term reactions, for things like feeling hungry, that's controlled with hormones, and we'll talk about that in another video. So this is what a nerve cell looks like. Uh, the big bit is the cell body, and the long bit there is the axon. In the cell body, that's where the nucleus is, and things like the cytoplasm, a lot of the mitochondria, and the cell membrane stretches all the way around the side. These lumps are actually separate cells, they're called Schwann cells, and they're to do with insulation. They supercharge the cell and make its electrical signals really, really fast. I'll tell you more about those in a moment. The spindly bits are called dendrites, they're gonna make connections with other cells, and that'll be a chemical connection called a synapse between two nerve cells. We'll go into that in more detail in a different video. Nerves have adaptations to make them good at their job. One of them is that they have plenty of mitochondria. That means that they've got plenty of energy and that energy is used to generate the signals to start the electrical transmission all along the nerve cell. They also have lots of dendrites. The dendrites make connections and they, that means we can have more complex messages going from one nerve to another. For example, if you touch something that's hot, you might withdraw your hand, but a second response that might come out of that is that you feel the pain. And so those two things can come out of the one nerve cell that's making different connections and sending different signals to different parts of the body. This can also help detect different amounts of light, different colours of light, and so we'll talk about that in more detail when we look at the eye in the video next week. Another adaptation is the fact that they are long. Uh, the longest nerve in your body is the sciatic nerve and it goes all the way from your hip, or just above your hip, down to your foot but because they're so long, they can transmit these signals really quickly around all of the body. Now these Schwann cells help the electrical signal travel really, really fast. And so to be able to understand how the Schwann cells help, we need to first understand what is going on with this electrical signal. So electricity is the flow of charged particles. Normally in a wire, that would be the flow of electrons, but in your body is mostly the flow of sodium and potassium ions, so Na plus and K plus. Sometimes there's chloride ions and calcium ions mixed in too, but sodium and potassium are the main two. Now, as a signal moves along a nerve, what happens is that the sodium ions flow in and the potassium ions flow out on the whole. As sodium ions flow in, that triggers the channels next to it to also allow sodium ions in, and so it spreads further down the axon. The influx or inward movement of sodium through some channels triggers the inward movement of sodium in the next channels along. This movement of sodium ions into the nerve cell spreads along the axon, and that is the signal that's traveling down it. Potassium's role is to reset the nerve after it's been depolarized, that's what we call it, when the, the cell has an influx of sodium ions, and so potassium moves out of the cell uh, to reset it. That also means that it travels in one direction, it can't go backwards because the potassium is there flowing out of the cell. There's also a really helpful protein called sodium potassium ATPase that basically pumps sodium and potassium back to their starting positions and means that then we can have another electrical signal travel down the nerve soon. Now Schwann cells supercharge this process by stopping it happening in some places. They contain myelin, which is an insulator, so the process of gaining Schwann cells around an axon is called myelination. What that means then is that the only place where the sodium and potassium can flow in and out is in these little gaps between the Schwann cells. Now that gap, because its biology has a special name, that's called a node of Ranvier, and so the conduction jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier. And again, being biology, we've got a special name for that conduction, that's called saltatory conduction, because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. Now, if there wasn't this myelin sheath, then the sodium potassium would have to do this little switcheroo all the way along the axon. 
But as it is, they can just do it at the gap and then at the next gap and then at the next gap. And so it really speeds up the ability of the electrical signal to pass along the axon. So just to summarize, the movement of ions like sodium and potassium uh, flowing in and out through the nodes of Ranvier jumping along in saltatory reconduction means that we can send signals, electrical signals, uh, along a nerve cell and into another one via a synapse, a connection. Now, when I got electrocuted the other day, uh, the electrons in the wire messed up the sodium and potassium ions in my nerves. What they did was they caused contraction in my muscles because they sent a signal that wasn't coming from my brain, but instead was coming from the wire that I touched. And so what happened was my muscles contracted. I ended up aching as if I'd just lifted something very heavy in the gym because all the muscles had contracted. Nerves are really cool, but pretty complicated. I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit about what's going on inside them and why I think they're amazing. I'll be doing a few more videos on control in the next few weeks. So we'll look at the eye, the brain, uh, hormones and things like that. If that sounds like that's going to be your cup of tea then do click the subscribe button. Also I'm still thinking of other ideas like a live stream, question and answer, maybe some study skills videos so let me know in the comments if you think that will be a good idea. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.